I will film in front of my bookshelves again but today is not that day because they are a mess. <laughs> Hi guys I am Ashley and today I'm going to be doing my July wrap up and August TBR. In the month of July I read five books which isn't great but it isn't bad either so I'm not too fussed about that and I do actually have a TBR this time so it's probably going to be one of the longer videos on this channel <laughs> but let's just jump right in. The first book I read was Strange Tales from a Chinese Studio by Pu Songling. This one I was so so hyped about when I bought it because I was just really in the mood for something completely different to what I usually read and it's basically a bind up of lots of really really short stories from Chinese culture that are all very odd and that just won me over straight away because I love weird stories. <laughs> When I went into this I immediately loved it because it was really quick to read. All of the stories are about two or three pages long at most. There's illustrations to go with most stories and like I said they are quite odd. But then once I got about halfway through the repetitiveness really started lowering my rating. While it was all around Chinese culture it kind of all based on the same aspects of it so there'd be fox spirits and ghosts and just things like that there's just over a hundred stories in this book and when they're all based around the same sort of themes about halfway through it gets really repetitive and that kind of lowered my rating as i kept reading because everything just started sounding the same and i got bored very quickly unfortunately i didn't love it as much as i'd hoped to but it was still pretty good and i rated it three out of five stars I then picked up The Iliad by Homer. I have started getting into ancient classics and just reading about ancient civilizations, so this was my first official ancient classic. And I think I chose a great place to start because it really got me in the mood for more. So this is about the Trojan War, it just tells the story of the last few days of the war. You see a lot of familiar faces like Achilles, Patroclus, Agamemnon, people like that. It's all war based, you see the story from both sides plus the side of the Greek gods. The level of detail in this is incredible because it's very gory, I have to say that, but if you don't mind that sort of thing then it's like a really epic battle for an entire book. It's very easy to see why so many people have been impressed with this over centuries. The only thing that lowered the rating for me was how slow it was to read and get through for me because while it was very easily accessible it was perfectly fine to understand. Every single character is mentioned by title. It doesn't matter how short amount of time a character came in, they would be announced by title so it would be their name, their father's name and then probably where they came from. When they're all Greek names as well they are all very long names. <laughs> It did slow me down considerably but it didn't really ruin anything. I found that it definitely picked up towards the end which was always a bonus. It just blows my mind that once upon a time this story that I have just read was told by ancient Greeks. Like, what? <laughs> I love history. But yes, I ended up rating this 3.5 out of 5 stars. I then read Circe by Madeline Miller which was an early copy sent to me by Bloomsbury so thank you very much Bloomsbury oh my god I love it <laughs> this is a retelling of Circe's story who is a goddess slash sorceress who is mentioned in the Odyssey by Homer it's just fab it's amazing <laughs> I absolutely love reading from Circe's point of view she's like one of my favourite characters because she's just sassy, she knows what she wants. The character development of her is actually astounding because I didn't realise it was happening, it's that subtle, but then when I finished the book and thought about the person she was at the beginning, it's so different and I was like, wow. <laughs> I was really pleasantly surprised to find quite a few myths mentioned because I thought it would literally just be Cersei and the bit in the Odyssey that she's part of, but no there's quite a few mixed in and it was kind of that moment where someone would be mentioned and I'd be like I know you <laughs> yeah that was really satisfying 
there was something about the ending that I didn't like, which I'm obviously not going to say because, spoilers, it's not even out yet. But it didn't let it down for me. It was just kind of something that I'd have preferred it not to be there. But yes, this is a new favourite of mine. I rated it 5 out of 5 stars. I then picked up The Secret History by Donna Tartt because I have seen so many people rave about this and that kind of let it down for me, honestly, because I didn't find it all that amazing. I can't really explain what this is about because it's either going to sound really boring or it's going to give away the biggest point in the story, so I'm not going to explain what it's about but there'll be links down below. It's quite a slow book. It's the sort where the characters are really difficult. <laughs> and I say that because quite a lot of people seem to love them but I can't stand any of them. So I don't know how that works but that happened. <laughs> My first problem was that all of the characters are really really pretentious and egotistical and just think they're better than everybody else which is my biggest pet peeve in any human or character or thing ever so that started off well I did have hope because it started picking up about halfway through and it like went from zero to a hundred in about a page it like takes such a massive turn it's actually quite shocking <laughs> but this book is split into two parts and the second I hit the second part it just kind of stopped there for me because it really slows down quite a few people have said that it really slows down at part two but for me it never picked back up again so I kind of just went from being bored to oh my god what the hell is happening to just bored again and that's how I ended it yeah I was quite disappointed by this one even though it was really unique so I ended up rating it a three out of five stars and then the final one that I've read entirely is the Grimm's Fairy Tales by Philip Pullman. This, again, I was disappointed by it. I wanted really old fairy tales and Philip Pullman had changed them. <laughs> I picked this up because I did want to read more into the original fairy tales and it kind of just didn't feel like that for me somehow. Philip Pullman had added bits to them or changed them slightly and even though that was pointed out and he told which bits he'd changed, it just kind of ruined it a little bit for me because I wanted them to be as close to the originals as possible and also the writing was really simple so it didn't really like keep my attention for long because it was just there was a miller who had a daughter and then this happened and then this happened and then the end it kind of just got really boring after a while <laughs> I did really like though that at the end of each story there's a small analysis and it kind of just tells you where the story originated from and any similar stories because the Grimms didn't make the stories, they just collected them. So I quite liked reading about that. Other than that, it was a bit of a disappointment for me and I rated it 2 out of 5 stars. <laughs> Moving on to the August TBR section of this video. I again have 5 books in this. I don't know if I'm going to read them all, but I kind of... I'm kind of feeling them at the minute, so we'll just see which ones I end up cramming in. <laughs> so at the minute I'm currently reading The Library of Greek Mythology by Apollodorus. Probably saying that wrong. I am actually hoping to finish this tomorrow, which will mean it's in part of my July wrap up, but I haven't finished it at the moment of me filming this, so I can't really talk about it. But this is just a collection of Greek myths and much like the Iliad, so far it's very detailed on the names. <laughs> I am enjoying it but again it's quite a slow read because of the names but I find it really interesting to read the original Greek myths, not none of the retellings or anything because I vaguely know them but not definitely so reading this will be sure to rectify that. <laughs> I'm also currently reading The Changeling's Journey by Christine Spores which I'm so excited about. <laughs> I am a friend of Christine's and I'm so proud of her for self-publishing her own book. I'm only about 50 pages in so far because, like I said, I want to finish the Library of Greek Myths before I go on holiday, so this will probably end up coming on holiday with me. But from those few pages I've read so far, I am absolutely adoring it. Christine's writing style, it just feels so whimsical and I'm here for it already. This is a fantasy inspired by Scottish folklore about changelings and fairies and all things like that. <laughs> I think the title pretty much tells you the plot to be honest, the changeling's journey. <laughs> 
but yeah, it's basically a fantasy story based on Scottish folklore, told by an actual Scottish author, <laughs> which is very rare apparently, so yeah, I'm very excited to read this one. <laughs> So on this holiday I'm taking three books because I'm going for a week and I don't know how much I'm going to be reading and there's quite long journeys and things like that. So one of them, like I said, is going to be The Changeling's Journey. The second one I think will be Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo. This is the first book in a DC icon series. It was sent to me by Penguin, so thank you very much Penguin. And as you can see, this one centres around Wonder Woman. I don't actually know that much about Wonder Woman. I've not seen the film yet. I've not like read any of the comics or anything or just anything that's come out ever so I don't actually know that much about Wonder Woman but I'm pretty sure this is sort of like an origin story or just in her younger years so I'm very excited to read this one the other one I'm taking with me is The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb in this little tiny version this I don't actually know what it's about I just hear everybody raving about Robin Hobb books and I've not read any of them so figured I should start <laughs> and that's basically about as far as that thought process goes so that was brief <laughs> and the final book I'm going to mention today is The Odyssey by Homer like I said I read The Iliad and now I want to read The Odyssey because this is about Odysseus and his journey home from the Trojan War so this is kind of like a sequel but kind of not you know I'm pretty sure this one's going to be a bit easier for me to read than The Iliad because it's not entirely war based, it's more of a journey, a voyage, battling monsters, things like that rather than just people killing each other. <laughs> I am very excited to read this one and also this is on my uni reading list so I'm very excited to read it before I go to university so that I kind of know it beforehand. And that's it for this video. You will end up seeing all of these books minus one in my next haul video because I got them all recently so spoiler alert for my next haul but there are other books as well it's not just going to be the exact same video <laughs> if you've read any of these books please let me know your thoughts down in the comments below or if any of them are on your tbr or you have any recommendations based on them then again leave them in the comments let me know how many books you read in july and what's on your tbr i hope you have a lovely day and i shall see you next time with a new video bye